Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Liakot Rasool. Um, thank you, Jen. Um, I'm a collage and fibre artist, and I make things out of uh, found papers that I collect. Um, they can be things that are kind of perhaps not that special to anybody else. I like kind of quite like packaging fabrics. I like receipts, invoices. I like things that are printed on bits of paper. Um, and the quality that that brings to to the piece of paper. Um, I like kind of quite cheap paper, like newsprints and things like that. Um, and um, I also suffer from depression. So this absolutely therapizes me. Um, my art practice is really um, quite a beautiful thing for me. Um, and I try and create different collages all the time as a way of trying to keep myself distracted from from things and um also develop new processes for for, for my art um i've brought some examples to show you here so this one is literally i think it's just some packaging card um and i've just cut a bit here out and then inserted some random bits of yellow and orange card, which are just little bits of scraps. Um, this is um, corrugated card along here that I've just um, got a ruler and a, um, some felt tip pens and created this lovely texture here. Um, this is just a yellow piece of card that I've placed on top. So I kind of like to have texture on top of texture. So what I've done here is just, I've got these little yellow bits of tape that I've just applied here, applied those bits on top. This, I don't know whether you can see, but it's like, it's sellotape. So like normal sellotape, it's just a really lovely addition to a very matte surface because the gloss nature of the sellotape um, becomes a really nice feature. And then what I tend to do, the randomness, randomness of the sellotape that's been placed on the collage, I tend to outline. So we've got um, biro, we've got sellotape, we've got um, a little bit of a receipt, possibly a bank statement, um, some masking tape, very low tech, um, and very much sort of democratic art, as in we can, we can all um, produce something like this. Um, this is um, lots of different tissue papers. It's very subtle, but I can't, I don't know whether it comes across that well, but you can sort of see the subtlety of it. Um, and it has lots of different papers in white. And then there's a bit of plastic in the middle here. Um, and then I just travel a marker along each, each lined ruler. And it takes a while actually, because the paper keeps changing. So you have to slow down, and then you have to pick it up again. And then you slow down and pick it up. So uh, this can take me quite some time, but this is a very meditative, lovely thing to do. Um, it's, it's sort of complex in its sort of uh, background papers, but seemingly simple when you just look at it once you've done it. So I, I really like that sort of idea. Um, this is just tissue paper, like two sheets of tissue paper. And this is a padded envelope underneath. So I, I've trapped it in between the two tissue papers. And this is just sort of bits of tape, um, bits of circle, um, card, punched card here and then lots of different, I, I use a variety of markers. I use Sharpies, I use cheap markers um, or felt tip pens. And then where these circles here that I've applied or the squares, I've attached the glue and then the glue kind of highlights that area, which is a, lo a lovely sort of surprise um, from, from sort of experimenting and trying out new things. So today we're going to make the textile truck. Um, 
So this is the textile truck here. So I'm just going to run through a few sort of points here. So I've got sort of um, some white paper, which has come out of the magazine. And I've got a napkin, a tissue, bits of color card. That's a bit of sellotape. Um, masking tapes dotted around. Um, and then I've just sort of um, created these strips. It was really interesting, actually, not using um, scissors. It was it brought out a whole different vibe to the collage, and it was really successful. Particularly, I that that was really interesting doing the circles. I just used a cello tape um, to draw around, and I would tease the paper away. So, um, so yeah, a bit of an envelope here, a receipt, a lottery ticket. Didn't win anyway. But um, yeah, so I thought I'd just break that down for you by illustrating a kind of the skeleton of that collage because it's quite busy. So um, I thought we could just draw this together. If you have a plain piece of A4 paper, um, we could do this now. Um, so I'm going to start with that. Um, And just a reminder before we start that if anyone needs any extra information on our website, we've also got a step by step guide for this workshop and an inspiration sheet showing lots of amazing, colourful, wonderful images from trucks in India and Pakistan. I'm going to start with the wheels. Thank you, Jen, for that. Um... So this is just a guide. It's 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 sort of um, we don't need to match it up perfectly. It's just so that you're aware of the fact that we use a circle, a square, a rectangle, and a triangle as a basic um, as basic forms that create the textile truck. Um, So the back of the truck, I'm going to sort of make taller. And this is a sort of, a sort of square shape. So And now what we're going to do is the front bonnet. And then here is where the triangle will be. So you can start processing the kind of three areas we'll be looking at. So we've got a square here, we've got a rectangle here, and then we've got a triangle. So that's just to sort of help you frame that in your mind um, as we begin to sort of construct different parts of it. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to cut a few strips, some of these strips here. So I'm going to use, um, first of all, let me just show you my materials. So here I've got my receipts. Another lottery ticket I didn't win. Um, and yeah, so that's my receipts pile. This is all my uh, magazine sort of stuff. And I've got some bits of graph paper here. And then I've just got a collection of sort of colored scrap papers. I mean, they're just sort of tissue paper. Um, but it's all scraps. Like there's nothing really here that's been bought. It's kind of, it's all um, stuff that you have lying around. Um, or if you've got access to children, I'm sure they've got lots of papers like this. So, right. 
So first, if you pick a piece of um, paper, um, it could be color, it could be um, plain, or it could be a piece of receipt. It's up to you. I'm going to use some color. I just want to be able to sort of create these strips here. So I just want to create about three of those and maybe one of one here, sorry, for this and the spindle thing. So we're just going to go along very calmly and very slowly go go through all of this. And um, yeah, hopefully um, if you have any questions, then do let me know. So if you just use your nail to score, and then what I do is, this is a really lovely thing to do, is just sort of very slowly, um, I'm going to make about three of these. I think I'll make the next one a bit skinnier. Liaquat, we've had a fantastic question come through already from Becca. Yeah. M. And Becca would like to know, what is the textile truck? Is it a common vehicle in India? Is it a fantasy machine? What does it mean to you? It's, it's a metaphor and it's, um, I just thought it's something that I'm a textiles freak, so I love textiles, and I see textiles as any sort of surface. It doesn't have to be your sort of traditional embroidery kind of um, woven kind of textile. Any surface um, on the street can be a textile. And I like the idea of creating a textile truck where the textile truck can take you wherever you want to go and it could hopefully ignites your imagination is that was the idea behind it and then me and Jen were chatting about about it and we then we sort of chatted about sort of um Indian truck art and then we just thought oh actually that's a really great way of framing the workshop as well because I think those Indian art trucks are just quite extraordinary um and also, you know, those guys are just regular guys that do that. I mean, they're, they're sort of under-celebrated. Um, so what I'm doing now is just pleating that like that. So um, it's kind of just, so I've got three of these. One of the, I've just pleated one, but I might pleat this one quite wide. Um, yeah, and you can imagine who you want to be in the textile truck as well. You can take your friends on holiday or something, or you could, um, you know, it could just, yeah, it's just something to ignite the imagination I thought would be nice. So I, I'm taking another piece of coloured paper. So this is about sort of roughly eight centimetres by about 18 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating some stripes on this um, maybe I will go to purple and we're going to create some diagonal stripes on this so it could be any color pink or whatever or it could be plain that would work um, just as well. I'm going to do another one on a receipt as well in a sec. So um, I'm going to do a diagonal design. And of course, a big reminder for everyone watching and taking part in any of our digital art school workshops, you can do whatever you like in these sessions. We, of course, have our brilliant artists giving us a lovely step by step tutorial, but it's really important for you to feel that you can feel free to create anything. And we do have, as I love to remind you all every week, a gallery on our website, and you can find that at hospital-rooms.com. We'd love to see your textile truck submissions today. Um, so I'm just sort of going back and forth just to make sure that the um, it's gone through properly. 
on the paper because I've got a background colour here. But I will do one on a receipt as well. So what I'm doing is building up the elements um, for the collage. Um, and, you know, you could do circles for this if you wanted to. You could do scribbles. Maybe I'll do a scribble one on the receipt, actually. Um, but I suppose we're, we're constructing a, a kit of sorts. We've got the spindle things here. We've got this pink thing. So let's just... Um, Quick time check for everyone. We've got about 30 minutes remaining of today's workshop. So what I'm going to do is, if I do a lot of stripes, let's mix it up. And I'm just going to let the, the marker pen just flow and literally just don't think. Just sort of, if it gets awkward, that's fine. If it gets tricky, just. If you're feeling frustrated, let it all out. So what's interesting here is on a receipt it does this weird thing can you see how it's gone purple and then it's red it's sort of created its own sort of like beautiful beautiful sort of print idea and i mean it's these sorts of surprises that i just love from sort of you know picking up old scraps of paper and just having having a go at things right next the wheels so maybe that's let me go for a yellow wheel or a blue. Right, okay, let's just. So, just need to outline paper. I'm going to do the same for this. So you could actually do double as well, as I'm doing. just want to make the circle bit bigger. Right, so now what I'm going to do is just cut all this excess first. And very, very slowly, just take a little bit at a time and Tease along that marker line. So remember everyone, don't worry how fast or slowly you are doing this, just enjoy the process as much as you can. I'm just going to take a moment to say hello to some of the wards and units that are joining us today. Big hello to everyone from Lavender Ward, thanks so much for being with us live. Huge hello to everyone joining us from Wheatfield in Northampton and a big hello to Maxine, thank you so much for joining us again today. I mean this is really meditative this process and I kind of, I could just sit and do this for, for like at least half an hour. Just, it's really, it's really good for your fingers as well. To like give your fingers a workout. Um, and also it gets us away from the digital world and our smartphones, all, all the news. So, um, now it's not perfect. You know, it's got like rough edges and things like that, but you know, it's a circle, so it's fine. I'm really happy with that. And I think that's really, I think it's fantastic that we've not used scissors. I just think it's so cool. Right, so I'm going to move on to the next one. So just make it easier by just trimming 
the excess off first. It just makes it easier. So again, very, very slowly. And also I'm doing it in really, really like almost like two millimeter bits. It's really sort of, you don't need to rush it um, because the slower you do it, the more precise the actual um, cutting out will be. Now I think I'm going to draw a third circle because what I want to do is actually um, add like a half a circle on each of the wheels. I mean, what's extraordinary is once you've done the line, it really, really helps to guide you. Um, right. So. I might just use the stripy paper. Try it or oh. oh my god. I'm just gonna use half this stripy paper because I'm gonna sort of like make some mud guards, I think. And then I think. I will also use a little bit of red for the other mudguard. What's amazing to watch, Leah, quite about your process is that you haven't really planned much. You're just kind of going with what you're feeling and what materials you've got. Yeah. That's really lovely process to watch. Yeah, I think I think the playfulness is really important and the messiness is really important. Um I kind of and what's nice is putting together these elements and what we can do is before you stick anything down is is almost see what kind of versions you want to create before you st stick them down because we've all done it where we've you know stuck something down and thought oh god that i'm not sure about that now but you can just um play around with them um and the act of play is a really important thing for the brain um And also, if you're not precious about something, you possibly have more fun because you're not, um, there isn't an end game that you have to sort of um, adhere to. Um, and again, the you know, the surprises wouldn't occur if you didn't play, you know, so it's sort of, it all, um, it all makes sense to me to sort of encourage um, play and, and different techniques. Um, and I always really love pushing the boundaries of collage as well to see what uh, what other processes can be developed. Um, I think that's why I really like doing my mobile faces because they kind of they have movement in them. So you can see that I've got the two circles, two wheels. I've got mud guards, but you know. We can just see whether which one works on which. Um, so I'll just put those on one side now. So going back to this drawing here, I'm now going to start looking at this square shape and just find something that I can um, use for, for that size. And then also, um you probably can't see but like can you see how there's like a square here and it's bleeded out so that's basically this is like a piece of magazine and that's like the napkin so when i draw the lines across it doesn't bleed on the uh, on the magazine bit but it does bleed on the napkin and that's like really beautiful 
I just got really excited when that happened by accident one day, and I just I, I've been milking it ever since. But um, so to create this square shape, I then have to create a window for the napkin. Napkin will sit behind the magazine, and I'll just sellotape it from the back. But that's what we're going to do next, and then maybe add a few stripes on the napkin when we bleed over. Um, right, so. Uh, we've had a lovely comment come through from Maxine who says she's going to use some dried rose petals for her wheels oh my god yes that's gorgeous oh my god that's so romantic I love it <laughs> and we do also have an international audience today a big hello to Becca who's joining us from sunny Switzerland oh wow hello Switzerland So this is the sort of square shape. So as you can see, that sort of roughly fits that. Doesn't have to be exact. But um, um, so, right, I need a bit of napkin. So I've got a napkin here. And what I'm going to do is, need a, I need one or two little stripe things. So I'm just going to use a bit of colour again and just score that and just tease. Maybe I'll do another pink. And by pleating it, you can get pretty good sort of, you know, like little stripey bits. Um, which, okay. So I'm just going to cut that. Um, right, I'm just going to place these two stripes. You can use any kind of paper for this. This is to encourage um, further texture difference for when we do the markering later on. So I'm just going to use a bit of, oh, where's my glue? All right, just that. So we're just gluing little bits. And it can be vertical, it can be horizontal. And just a time check for everyone, we've got about 15 to 20 minutes left today. I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to just sort of use up some of this, maybe. Right, so we now need to create this window idea. So what I'm going to do is fold sorry, that way. Fold my square, and then with a pen, just going to sort of roughly figure out where the window will be, where the napkin will sit behind it. So again, I'm just going to, I mean, it's, it's not perfect, that it's just rough, but it will be a square. So very slowly, I'm going to tease these bits. There we 
go. So maybe that will go that way. That way. Yeah, so have a feel of where you think that square go. So what I do at this stage is just dab it with a little bit of glue here. Um, and then we're going to add um, a little bit of masking tape. So you just get a bit like this and just cut it into small bits and then just place it sort of around the frame. That yellow bit from before, I'm going to just use uh, maybe another Right, I'm also going to stick a little bit of color tape. So do you remember earlier I was talking about the color tape on my earlier collages. That when the marker goes across, the marker will will not take on the vinyl. So creating further texture difference. Um, now, so because I like stripes. Going to do some stripes. So I'm going to select some colors green, yellow, orange, pink, blue, red. I'm just going to take the tops off and I'm going to um, have these ready so I can just draw all the different lines. You can use one color if you want, or you can use two colors. Um, this is the kind of, um, this is what we're looking at here is, um, sorry. So I just kind of randomly chose the stripe of colors. I, I might have used more colors there, but um, you know, you can see I've used two blue lines. So whatever you feel like, just go with the flow. It could be all black, it could be all red. You know, that would be really powerful as well. So. Um, there are no actual rules to this. Um, so I'm literally like the first one I've touched is a red one. So I'm going to go with the red. And I'm just going to do two lines of red. Then move on. And Maybe I'll do two lines each. Maybe that's my strategy. So you can see already that the blue hasn't taken it where the cellar tape is. So that's creating texture. Um. So when you're on the mag magazine bit, you can be quite quick. But once you get to the tissue bit, you have to be really, really slow because otherwise um, the tissue will um, disintegrate. So, um, and that quietness and slowness is actually quite a lovely, um, quite a lovely moment actually, because it forces you to slow down. Um, I'll just run over the tissue. A time check for everyone. We've got about 15 minutes remaining. So can I just show you quickly? Can you see those sort of 
texture differences it's quite difficult to see but um maybe some yellow so very very slowly when you guide it over the tissue Do another pink one. No purple. And what's really nice about having the, the markers just open and just next to your fingers, your fingers do the work. Like my brain hasn't even engaged on, on the color. And it's sort of, um, you know, it's nice to be a bit reckless sometimes, not have to think too much. We're going to prolong the tissue. So the napkin um, soaks up a lot more ink than what the magazine section does. I might just go all green actually now. I really like this green. It's talking to me. Becca, who's our lovely participant joining us from Switzerland, has left a comment saying it's so inspiring to leave perfection behind. Oh, cool. Yeah, no. Um, I kind of, um, yeah, like I, I'm not slick or kind of, um, yeah. And also what's really nice is sort of, apart from the napkin bit is the other bits we glued on, you have to go over them, stop, and then go back down. Um, forcing you to sort of um, be slow. So a lot of people talk about cartography in my work because of this striped design that features. So I think there's some sort of mental sort of thought process that I have of how um, there's a, a link with cartography and how, how my, how I consolidate thoughts or ideas, I think. Um, right. Okay. So that's that bit done. Right. So now. I've got, got that bit done. So now this bit, we're going to do the front of the truck. So I'm thinking of what about our really outlandish kind of scribbly thing. I mean, this is almost like street graffiti or something, isn't it? I'm just checking it up against here just to see how it fits. And I think that's quite that's quite a nice fit. So um, I'm just going to go ahead with that. And then tear that. Wheatfield Unit have said that they are really enjoying this workshop. Their participant Lewis is using lots of circles. One of them has a crossword in the centre. Oh, brilliant. Um, I'm just using solid tape to attach mine, um, the front of the truck. 
And also, you can see the back's really nice as well. It's sort of, you know, that to me is really beautiful as well. You know, there's so much that you could you could go off and try different papers and just see what happens. Um, you know, that little section there is so nice. Um, right, okay. So back to, do you remember this that we had? So I'm going to fold this in half. And what I want to do is create like the pipe for the back of the truck. So I'm just going to, I'm actually going to use the text here as a kind of, as, as my right side. Um, so I'm just folding it once like this. And then folding it again. And then I'm going to fold it fourth time, just very, so I'll just give that a little glue. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that dry a little bit. That's just gonna be there. Now back to these. So once you've decided on how you'd like your mud guards to look, it might be good to sort of look at it within context of this. So there's that version. I think that's nicer actually, isn't it? Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. So I need a circle for each of those. So I'm just going to use a bit of yellow card, draw a circle, and then a bit of Yellow, so maybe pink. So another circle. So these are just going to be the centers of the wheel. So again. My glue. Yeah, we are kind of moving into the last five minutes or so of today's activity. Obviously, right. if you're joining us, you can take as long as you like. You can continue in the, into the afternoon. Uh, but for today's hospital room session, we've got about five, ten minutes left. Okay, cool. Wow, it's gone so quick. That's good. Um, right. So... Right. Ooh. Ooh, oh. right. Okay. Right, I'm gonna stick those down. Right. I'm really enjoying this. So I'm going to tilt that one a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of this newspaper underneath because I think it's sort of like creating more problems. 
Right. So we are right. So the spindly thing. Um, that's going to go here. So I'll just use my masking tape just to tape that on. I'm just going to draw around those bits of masking tape. And those masking tapes I added earlier. Um, I'm going to do I'm just going to place a heart on the, um, the pipe that I've just um, attached to the back of the truck. Um, so what I've got left to do, I've got to do the front of the truck. Um, And maybe the spindles on the um so that's gonna go there. So that's that's piping out love. Um so now these bits are gonna go like this. So I'm just going to tear that off, glue that there. Come on, glue. And then another one. Yeah. So again, just tear it off. Really easy, really simple. Um, and then you can just keep adding to little bits. Um, you know, I can just add that little bit there, for instance. Possibly too much glue there, but anyway. Right, okay. Now I'm gonna, I've got a little bit of this left. So I'm just gonna create some bumpers. So again, just, very kind of uh, that sort of that's a bumper size. I'm just going to I'm just going to frame that with a marker pen. So um, so you know it's a bumper. Two, 
Just as we're adding the last kind of details to our textile truck, just want to say thanks so much to Barbara for joining us. Barbara's had a bit of technical issue with her laptop today, so she thought she wasn't going to be able to join the workshop, but really thankful that she is. And that's a nice reminder that we do have all of our sessions and workshops recorded available on our YouTube channel for you to watch back at any time for free. You can find those by visiting YouTube and typing in hospital rooms. Right, so the last bit of the bottom railing on the truck. Right, okay, I'm just gonna get some white paper just to sort of How about that? That is an absolute piece of joy on a paper. <laughs> That's really is that all right. It's really beautiful, Lyalqua, and I can tell that you have enjoyed this process as much as Richard and I have been watching it, and I've no doubt that we're going to get some absolutely fantastic artworks out of this session. So just on behalf cool. of Hospital Rooms, thank you so much. So many beautiful textures and colours. We've had a really lovely comment come through from Hetty from the National Psychosis Unit at SLAM, who says that this is a very enjoyable session. The patients and staff really liked how their designs and different textures and colours made it spring to life. So thank you. And thank you, Hospital you, Rooms. Thank you. We hope to work with you again very soon. Do you have any kind of last words for us uh, before we leave today and wrap up? Do you have any anywhere online that we could see more of your works or learn more about you? Yeah, um, I basically, um, I'm on Instagram, Liapa Rasul Art is my Instagram handle. Um, but I think the most important thing is is for people just to have fun and make mistakes. And um, what I do is just create things with my hands and don't even sort of and keep them in little boxes. In the same way at the beginning when we created all these little components, and then suddenly you can put something together. Um, so it's been a really beautiful journey creating the textile truck. It has been a collaboration with the hospital rooms. This is, um, yeah, this is for the hospital rooms. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And thanks so much for popping that link in there as well, Hayley. So thanks to everyone that's also submitted a comment in the chat box. It's always so wonderful to have you all with us live. So it's time now, as always, to launch our end of workshop poll. If you can please indicate on your screens how you found the workshop today, this will really help us to grow and improve the digital art school through 2022 and beyond. So this should be popping up on your screens now. And I'll let that run through to the end of the session. So for those of you that are still here with us, I'd really like to share with you the story of hospital rooms and how the workshop today has come about. So we are a London based arts and mental health charity and we transform inpatient NHS mental health units with extraordinary art. The digital art school is hugely important as it allows us to build a community where we can join together globally and feel part of something really special.
You can find the library of our past projects and all of the previous digital art school workshops on our YouTube channel, where you'll find a variety of sessions with leading artists, from collage to drawing, printing, and so much more. Please do have a look and subscribe to our channel. It's completely free. We also have a digital art school newsletter, which keeps you informed of upcoming workshops, the materials you'll need for them, along with any PDF downloads you might need for the session. You can sign up for that at hospital-rooms.com. We love when you share your artworks with us by uploading to our online gallery. You can submit those using your name or you can stay anonymous. If you've created a textile truck today, either joining us live or watching this back on demand, we'd really love to see them. So we will be taking a break next week for the Jubilee Weekend Bank holiday, but we'll be returning on Thursday the 6th of June for a textile block printing workshop with Kay Davis. Don't forget to register for that on our website. From myself and everyone on the Hospital Rooms team, thank you all so much for joining us today. And another big thank you to our brilliant artist, Liaquat Razul. Take care, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the bank holiday weekend and we'll see you all again on Thursday the 6th of June.